Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing well. This is episode number three of the Glaciated Landscapes and Change series. Today we're going to be focused on past and present distribution of global ice cover. If this is your first time seeing me, hi I'm Lara. I am a second year geography and education student and this is a geography A level revision series but if you don't do that <laughs> this is probably quite useful for pub quizzes and who doesn't love learning things? So without further ado, if you've not subscribed, do so down below. Let me know that you've subscribed and I'd love to get to know you. And yeah, why not? Let's get straight into this. Some places on earth are so cold that they are permanently frozen or stored as snow or ice. These places make up the cryosphere, which is the frozen part of the earth's hydrological system. The cryosphere's largest element is made up of land surfaces, including the ice sheet found in Greenland and Antarctica, as well as ice caps, glaciers and areas of snow and permafrost. The remainder is made up of frozen areas of oceans, lakes and rivers, which mainly occur in polar or mountainous regions. Together, these act as stores within the global hydrological cycle. The components of the cryosphere play a vital role in the Earth's climate. Snow and ice reflect the sun, called the albedo effect. This helps to regulate the Earth's temperature. Polar regions are among some of the most sensitive to temperature change. So the cryosphere is, is an important focus for climate scientists researching global climate change. What about the different types of ice masses? Ice masses can be classified in different ways, by scale and location, and by their thermal characteristics. So scale and location. There are ice sheets. These are vast expanses of ice, often over a kilometre thick, which covers land surfaces. Antarctica is the largest of the two ice sheets. It covers 14 million kilometres squared and stores 90% of the Earth's fresh water. In places, it is four kilometres thick. Ice sheet margins can extend out to the sea and form ice shelves, which is where the ice sheet sits above the sea but is mainly sat above the solid earth, rock, land. Ice caps. These are smaller masses of ice that are often associated with mountain ranges. Europe's largest ice cap is Vatnajökull in Iceland, which is 800 kilometers squared in an area and about one kilometer thick. Glaciers. Most glacial landscapes are created by the movement of glaciers. There are two main types of glacier. Cirque or Corrie glaciers, are small and occupy armchair shaped hollows on mountains. These may overspill to feed valley glaciers, which are larger masses moving from ice fields or corries and following river courses. And then there's ice fields. These are areas of less than 50,000 kilometers squared. They are extensive regions of interconnected valley glaciers. High peaks called nuntaks rise above them. The temperature characteristics. Temperate glaciers are warm based glaciers. Water, which acts as a lubricant, is found throughout the ice mass, allowing the ice to move more freely and erode the rock. The base of the glacier is, a, is at about the same temperature as the pressure melting point. Temperate glaciers move between 20 and 200 metres a year, but can move up to 1,000 metres. In comparison, cold glaciers, or polar glaciers, remain frozen at the base, because the base is much colder than the pressure melting point. So there is little water or movement and therefore very little erosion. Polar glaciers only advance a mere few metres per year. The pressure melting point is the temperature on which the ice is on the verge of melting due to the pressure from the ice above. What about the distribution of cold environments? Most of the world's cold environments are located in the far northern hemisphere. This reflects the latitudinal position of the land masses. In the southern hemisphere, the equivalent latitudes coincide with ocean rather than land, which is why there's, there aren't as many glaciers in the southern hemisphere as there are in the northern. There are four main types of cold environment. Number one, polar regions or high latitude regions. Areas of permanent ice, essentially the vast ice sheets of Antarctica and central Greenland, 
inside the 66.7 degree latitude of the Arctic and Antarctic circles. The second one are the periglacial regions or the tundra regions. Literally speaking, they're at the edge of permanent ice. These are characterised mostly by permanent frozen ground known as permafrost and include large tracts of northern Canada, Alaska, Scandinavia and Russia. These regions vary between areas that are permanently frozen and those that thaw in summer. Number three, alpine or mountain regions or high altitude regions. For example, the European Alps, Himalayas, Northern Rockies and the Andes. While high altitudes result in cold conditions, it's in these altitudes that glaciers and glaciated landscapes are found. And then number four, glacial environments. Found at the edges of these ice sheets and in particular in the highest mountain regions such as the Himalayas and the Southern Andes. The evidence for the Pleistocene ice sheet. The UK's relict glacial landscape provides evidence that much of the country was covered by an ice sheet during the Pleistocene. But what is the evidence for this? There is erosional evidence. This is found in the Carrigorms in Scotland, Snowdonia in Wales and the Lake District in England. It includes corries, arets and glacial troughs, along with Roche Matones, Crag and Hale, Knock and Loken landscapes. Yeah, we're going to talk more about erosional features later, but this is kind of a little bit of an example of how the UK has been affected by glaciers. There's also depositional evidence such as drumlins, such as those in the Vale of Eden in Cumbria, erratics such as Bowder Stone in the Lake District, Moraine in the Carangorms. Again, we're going to talk about this a bit later, so subscribe down below to see that. And then there's also meltwater evidence, such as meltwater channels, such as Newtondale in North Yorkshire, glacial till, such as the Holderness Coast, eskers, such as Blakenly in Norfolk and again we're going to chat about this in a few weeks time. So that is the end of this video, I hope you learned something and um, please subscribe down below if you did enjoy it and I will see you same time same place next week, Monday 4.30pm. Bye guys.